One of the most common questions that I get on a regular basis is where are the best places to live in the Milwaukee area? And frankly, that is a tough one for me to answer objectively because it depends so much on your personal preferences. Fortunately, the online platform Niche.com has published a list with the 12 best places to live in the Milwaukee area in 2022 and that's what we're going to take a look at today. If you want to learn more about how they determine the ranking, I'll post a link in the description below, but in my personal opinion, they have done a pretty good job. So get ready to meet Milwaukee because in the next 12 minutes, we are going to take a look at the 12 top neighborhoods. Let's get started. Before we get started, here is some background. This ranking from niche.com provides an assessment of the overall livability of an area. This is probably the most general ranking, so please take this with a grain of salt. Nothing is absolute. Which neighborhood is actually the best one for you really depends very much on your personal preferences. So the following is a countdown of the 12 best in the Milwaukee area based on 15 data points from cost of living to employment, health and fitness, commute times, and many more. Let's get started with number 12, Glendale. Glendale is located on the northern part of Milwaukee County. Even though it is not directly on Lake Michigan, it is considered one of the North Shore municipalities. The Milwaukee River divides Glendale into two parts. It has lots of green spaces, good-sized suburban lots, and most of the homes were built in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Despite the very green and suburban feel, commuting downtown is quick and easy, as Glendale is right on the freeway I-43. The median home price is about $220,000, and with the population of only 13,000 people, it is one of the smaller municipalities, less than 1% of the 1.6 million people who live in the metro area. Number 11, Wauwatosa. Located very centrally, Wauwatosa is named after the Potawatomi word for firefly. Tosa, as the locals call it for short, has a dense suburban feel, which means houses are built close together, but it is also very green and often surprisingly quiet considering how central it is in the city. The proximity to the zoo interchange allows for very quick commutes into all four directions, in particular to downtown and to the airport. Wabatosa is one of the older neighborhoods. Most houses are about 100 years old and come with a lot of charm and also with smaller backyards. Median home values are about 242,000 with a population of almost 50,000 people. This is one of the larger municipalities in Milwaukee County. And the old village of Wabatosa is the heart of the area with a lot of great bars and some of my favorite restaurants. Number 10, Thinsville. Regarded as one of Wisconsin's best kept secrets, no wonder it's tiny with the population of just over 3,000. It was founded by a German entrepreneur in the mid 1800s who built a sawmill on the river there and they have been doing kind of their own thing ever since. Despite its small size, it has maintained its status as an independent municipality, completely landlocked and surrounded by the much bigger Mech One, which is something that local residents are actually quite proud of. Median home price, $253,000. Number nine, Bayside. This is the most northern village in Milwaukee County and it's located right on the shore of Lake Michigan. Bayside has a very green and secluded feel with larger lots and houses surrounded by old trees and plenty of green spaces. Many of the homes were built in the 1950s and 1960s and the median home price is $341,000. With only 4,500 residents, it's also the smallest of the North Shore communities. Traffic is easy, I-43 provides a quick commute downtown for work or if you want to change up the slower pace for or a more urban beat. Number eight, Mequon. As we keep heading north, Mequon is the first municipality in Ozaki County. Mequon is known for its subdivisions with large homes on generously signed lots, 
but also for lower property taxes compared to Milwaukee. Total population is about 24,000. East Mac 1, close to the lake, is desirable because it's also close to the freeway for a quick commute to downtown. A lot of homes there have been built in the 80s and 90s. The west side of Mac 1 used to be regarded a little lower priced with a lot of homes from the 60s and 70s, but has become a lot more popular in recent years with quite a bit of new construction. Median home value in Mac 1 is about $407,000. By the way, you can find very detailed reviews of individual Milwaukee neighborhoods on my YouTube channel. Today I'm here in Fox Point, which is actually one of my favorite neighborhoods, but I have not covered it yet in a video. I will do that definitely this year in spring and post a video here on my YouTube channel. So if you want to stay updated on everything that has to do with Milwaukee real estate, please consider subscribing. On my channel we cover everything from Milwaukee neighborhoods to Milwaukee real estate strategy, local trends and everything else that you need to know if you want to stay updated on Milwaukee real estate. All right, back to our ranking and number seven, River Hills. Also located along the Milwaukee River, this little community is truly a world of its own. The area is mostly wooded and with a tiny population of only 1,300 residents, it's both secluded and exclusive, yet very close to the city. Median home price, $642,000. Number six, Cedarburg. Located pretty centrally in Ozaki County, Cedarburg is a very quaint village, located also on the Milwaukee River and a popular tourist destination on weekends and especially for Strawberry Fest in spring. If you ever wanted to live in a small town, it does not get much better than this. The main street has a ton of little stores, coffee shops and restaurants of all kinds and all of it is very walkable. With a population of about 11,000 residents, it is one of the bigger communities in the generally more rural Ozaki County and Cedarburg is also rated the number one best suburb to buy a house in Wisconsin according to niche.com. No wonder home values have gone up quite a bit and the median home price is currently at about $303,000. Number five, Brookfield. Now we're finally getting into Waukesha County. Brookfield is located just west of Milwaukee and very well connected by I-94. It has a classic suburban feel with many subdivisions developed in the 1960s to the 1980s with some newer projects in between and still some ongoing new construction. Homes are medium to large with plenty of space in between the houses and Brookfield is one of the bigger communities with a population of almost 40,000 people. Also worth mentioning, in my opinion, it has probably some of the best shopping in the Milwaukee area with two major shopping malls along Bluemont Road. Median home prices around $318,000 and Brookfield ranks also very high in quite a few other categories. Number four, Shorewood. We are back in Milwaukee County and we are back on the lakeshore. Shorewood is located just north of downtown Milwaukee and it fills the area between the river and the lake. Shorewood is also an interesting community because it feels like a mix of quiet suburban with a little bit of urban sprinkled in between. You will find plenty of local shopping, coffee shops, as well as some nice bars and great restaurants located typically within walking distance and that has an appeal to a broad audience. Great parks also along the river with a beer garden and you can hop on the interurban bike trail here if you want. The population of 13,000 splits almost 50-50 between renters and owners. Most homes are about 100 years old and the median price is about $338,000. Number three on our list is Fox Point, another North Shore community still close enough to downtown Milwaukee to make it there on Monday morning in under 15 minutes. About half the size of Shorewood only with about 6,600 residents and Fox Point feels also a lot more suburban than its southern neighbors. Homes are smaller to medium size and usually with a nice size yard. A lot of the homes were built before the 1960s but they're usually well kept, often nicely updated. The median home price is about $325,000 but not too many homes come on the market. 
Number two, Elm Grove. Jumping back to the west side of the city, Elm Grove is a very small community right between Milwaukee and Brookfield. You will find here some rolling hills and narrow tree-lined roads, which can make you forget that you are so close to the city. The densely suburban area is home to about 6,000 residents and the median home price in Elm Grove is $370,000 but in some parts you will find homes that are valued quite a bit higher. And finally, number one on our list, Whitefish Bay. Also located right on Lake Michigan and part of the North Shore, Whitefish Bay is home to about 14,000 residents. Most of the homes are medium to large in size and about 100 years old. Location matters, the closer you get to the lake, the larger and more expensive homes get in general. The median home price is about $390,000, which homes closer to the lake oftentimes priced quite a bit higher. Whitefish Bay has a fair amount of local shopping and restaurants, and it is also close enough to zip downtown for a night out. All right, there you have it, 12 great Milwaukee communities, but I should mention at this point, a lot of really cool places have not even made it on this ranking for one reason or another, but are definitely worth checking out. For example, downtown Milwaukee, the historic Third Ward, or Bayview on the South Shore, to mention just a few. For a detailed look into most of these neighborhoods, check out my YouTube channel. You will find individual videos about most neighborhoods and those are giving you a good idea what to expect. The reason I say most is because I think I'm still missing three or four from this list, but I promise you will see them posted pretty soon, which of course is a great reason to subscribe and stay posted on everything about Milwaukee real estate. If you have more questions, please feel free to send me a quick email, or if you prefer, you can also give me a call. You have my personal cell phone number here on the screen. A lot of people are a little bit surprised when I actually pick up, but of course I'm happy to hear from you. And if I don't pick up right away, it's usually because I'm in a meeting with the client and I'll get right back to you. You can also go to my website onpointrg.com and schedule a Zoom call with me at a time of your convenience. You have access to my personal schedule there and I have time also outside of usual business hours. So after work or on the weekend is fine. That's all I had for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.